Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is David Murad, and I'm Director of Chapter Relations in the National Office of the Scleroderma Foundation. Today's presentation is pre recorded and it's the second of two, well, it's the second in a, in a monthly series focused on grassroots advocacy. Uh, we plan to wrap up in about 45 minutes. Um, and today's presentation is focused on preparing and sharing your own story. Uh, joining me today are Dee Burlisle, who is uh, from the Southern Idaho um, area. She's a support group leader and a member of the Foundation's Advocacy Committee. Uh, Shelley Van Pelt is a member of the Washington Evergreen Chapter. Um, and Shelley's made numerous presentations focused on scleroderma health-related issues nutrition and holistic lifestyle choices. She's also a member of the, um, she and Dee both are members of the Foundation's Advocacy Committee. Uh, Shelley and Dee um, and I have all participated as patient advocates at previous Capitol Hill Day trips to Washington, D.C. Thank you, David, for that wonderful introduction. Be prepared to share your elevator speech or pitch in an elevator, a letter, an email, even in a thank you. We're going to show you how to prepare your elevator speech. We're going to give you tips on how to deliver an effective elevator speech. We're going to uh, have you get a chance to create a memory. We're going to target in on some opportunities. We're going to target in on some missed opportunities. And we're also going to share with you teachable moments. So come on and join us as we teach you how to prepare your elevator speech. What is an elevator speech? An elevator speech is a clear, brief message about you that communicates who you are, what you're looking for, and how you can benefit from a company or organization. This is your chance to give a good idea on what your elevator speech is and to get your point across in a very succinct and timely manner. How you prepare your elevator speech. An elevator speech is a brief message like we talked about. It's absolutely no longer than 25 or 30 seconds. It's like a commercial in a way. Approximately 80 to 90 words. You rehearse it at home, make sure it's in that 30 second time frame. Practice with a friend. Do it in front of a mirror. Practice, practice, practice. The important thing is, is you want to make sure that you sound natural and that you're comfortable giving your story so that you can breeze right through when the time comes or like we like to say, that opportunity shows up so that you can share your elevator speech. Next slide. Thank you, Shelley. So we want to discuss the who, what, where, when, and why. The order may change, but the objective should always remain the same. It's important to make a good first impression, and you want people to understand the who, what, where, when, and why of your encounter. So I like to introduce myself and explain what I do. And it's good to try and leave a lasting impression. So who are you? You are an advocate, a parent, a sibling, a veteran, a medical professional, or what have you. Start by telling them who you are. Uh, next, you want to tell them what you do. For example, you can tell people you advocate on behalf of, scler of people with scleroderma. You can pitch your elevator speech anywhere. Keep in mind to use good judgment and approach people with respect and at appropriate times. So if you're in the grocery store and you see your state legislator, do not rush in and bombard them with your elevator speech. Rather, it's best to plan and schedule these type of formal appointments with your representatives because you need to have their undivided attention. Tell people why you are there. I'm here for medical treatment. I'm here for scleroderma patient conferences. I'm here to represent my state for the Scleroderma Foundation on Capitol Hill. So some good tips to use when you're delivering your elevator speech. There are some helpful tips to remember. You want to make and keep your statement brief. Be confident and know your material. And when you're speaking to someone, you want to make sure to 
have your body language reflect the message that you're trying to convey. So it's important to keep your eye contact, be respectful of the person's time and their personal space when sharing your information. And if you start speaking in medical terminology with someone who is not familiar with it, you may risk losing their attention in the process. So in the beginning, it may feel uncomfortable to talk about scleroderma. However, with a good elevator speech and practice, it will become easier for you to deliver. So in this slide, this represents an excellent example of an elevator speech that I might use. Take a look at the wording. You'll notice that I'm introducing myself. I give a very brief paragraph of what I do, who I am, and who I am affiliated with, and most of all, that I'm a patient advocate for scleroderma. I thank people for inviting me to speak with them, the where and the when, and I also try and get across, again, that very important point of we are looking for funding for scleroderma research. We're there to increase awareness, and we're there to, again, just very quickly get to the point of why we want them to, we want to grab their attention and listen to us. So the wording is the who, what, where, when, and why format. Simple, clear, easy to understand, and it still allows me to share key information. And all of that is important. Eye contact and body language are also important. So if you can, smile, put on your pleasantries, and share your elevator story with somebody. We are going to create a memory. This is your opportunity, a chance to shine, reveal your teal, share your elevator speech several times a day if the opportunity is given to you. As Shelly was just saying, there are many opportunities that you can use to advocate on behalf of people with scleroderma. Seek out opportunities to advocate. Find some commonalities that you can begin to build relationships with others. Look for teachable moments and build alliances as there are strength in numbers. Continue to follow up with all of those that you encounter. So an idea and in, in preparing to share your story, um, in a letter to a representative, prepare your sh to share your story in a letter or an email. So elected officials save all of their correspondence, so put your story in writing whenever possible. It will be a good resource for them to refer back to if they have a question or want to follow up from a meeting you had. The attached letter is a good format for writing to elected officials. There are also templates on the Scleroderma Foundation website. As delivering with an elevator speech, a letter to a representative should also include the who, what, where, when, and why. Make sure the letter includes the date, the address to where it's being sent, along with a brief three to four sentence and explanation of who you are. The next two paragraphs should include what your purpose is for writing the letter and should also conclude with why it's important to you and why it should be important to them as your, as your representative. So don't be shy about sharing your story if the opportunity arises. Educate health pro providers, businesses, government entities, and other nonprofit organizations. This slide uh, I have here includes an example of a letter I, I wrote to a professional football team. As you can see in this letter, I included the essential who, what, where, when, and why. I explained that I'm an advocate for the Scleroderma Foundation, that I was in Seattle for medical treatment, and happened to encounter some Minnesota Vikings players, and that I appreciated their interest uh, when the players expressed in learning more about Scleroderma. As a result of writing this letter, uh, the Minnesota Vikings responded with an article on their website about scleroderma. So this kind of just goes to show you may never know what the impact of your story will have on someone who hears about it. And to be an effective advocate, we, we want to remain bipartisan to reach across all party lines. Don't let bipartisan or don't let partisan politics lead to a missed opportunity. Always be prepared and be willing to talk about scleroderma. The more prepared you are, the more professional you will come across and the more credibility you'll have with others.
you are a representative of the, of the scleroderma community, so it's important to always be respectful and always keep in mind the best interests of the foundation and keep that in mind when you're sharing your story. When, you're, when we're talking about teachable moments, you want to help people to feel comfortable with your condition and in the process, educate them about scleroderma. I often will get questions about why I use the walker and I take advantage of those questions as an opportunity to teach others about scleroderma. So if you have visible symptoms of scleroderma, welcome those questions and thank those who ask the questions and taking the time to talk to you about it. For example, if you were to ask why you wear gloves in the middle of the summer, use that as a teachable moment to explain that the circulation in your hands is affected by the indoor cooling. If you use oxygen, you can explain that the air given through the cannula helps you to breathe more efficiently and that helps your lungs uh, and, and ultimately that has been affected by scleroderma. Now we're going to talk about the art of a thank you note. Examples when writing a thank you note, when someone goes out of their way to perform an act of service for you and goes above and beyond what you've asked them to do. It could be even after meeting someone, either at a conference, a business meeting, even in opportunities of travel. When you receive a gift, it's so nice to have a thank you note given to the recipient. When someone has you over for dinner, if someone shows you around the town or the city while you're vacationing, regardless of where you're staying, whether it be at their home or not, a thank you note, a personal thank you note, really shows them that you enjoyed yourself, you enjoyed your time with them, and that you were very grateful that they spent their time with you. After meeting with one of my U.S. editors in Washington, D.C. last year during Advocacy Day, I followed up with a letter to express my appreciation for their time and attention. The Scleroderma Foundation provided the template for the follow-up letter, and I inserted the information um, that's highlighted here in the blue about our meeting and a little bit more of an update from my background. Uh, I know it can be intimidating for some to write it to an elected official, but do take advantage of the resources provided by the foundation. They will provide you with many resources that can help you get your message to these elected officials. And also, don't forget to thank anyone who goes out of their way to help you. A simple follow-up email to a hotel employee who provides exceptional service, um, and in this instance, this uh, employee provided some extra assistance and was willing to go the extra mile for me to accommodate my use of the walker. And it was a great opportunity for me to not only express my appreciation, but to also educate the employee and his supervisor about scleroderma. Allow your friends and family to be involved. After developing a relationship with the Minnesota Vikings, my kids wrote these letters to the team to express their appreciation. It's not only helped personalize my story, but it's also helped my kids to make a difference in the lives of people with scleroderma. Over the past year, our family has been corresponding with the Minnesota Vikings football team. The team sent our children a care package um, with Vikings gear along with autographed photos. Our children followed up with thank you letters and in the letter on the right side, um, my son, who's 10 years old, attached and scotch taped two of the Scleroderma Foundation's uh, bracelets to his letter. He wrote, thank you for the support with my mom and my family. I have done a lot of volunteer work for the Scleroderma Foundation. Here, we want you to give these two bracelets to two of the Vikings players. These mean a lot to me for support of my mom, so please don't lose them. Please give to number 29, Xavier Rhodes, and to number 34, Andrew Sendejo. In, uh, in the response, the photo on the left was the autographed pictures from Xavier Rhodes of the Minnesota Vikings, and on the right is a picture of our son, who recently was watching um, the Vikings play the Redskins, and um, it's, it's got Xavier Rhodes playing football while wearing his scleroderma bracelet. Uh, that's fantastic, Dee. Thank you. Um, 
So the a lot of the the resources that that Dee and Shelley have referenced are available on the foundation's website. So if you go to scleroderma.org um, slash advocacy or in the top search field at the bottom at the top of the screen, you can just type in the word advocacy and it'll take you to to this page. And this is the Action Center page. Uh, the first link where it says Advocate Resources is where you'll find um, information about this this series of grassroots training webinars as well, as well as recordings for the ones that have already happened. You can sign up for action alerts that uh, we send those out um, really very occasionally. They're very specific for very specific action that um, is is usually related to asking your elected officials to either to support something or not to support something as the case may be. Um, and typically those are um, in partnership with a number of other um, healthcare and rare disease um, associated organizations. So we work together with a number of organizations to support research or to support advocacy efforts that, that affect a number of people. Um, there's also a link there to find your representative. So you just type in, typically it's just your street address, city, state, and zip, and it'll tell you who your, not just who your elected officials are, but all the ways that you can um, connect with them. And then uh, Capitol Hill Day this year, it's April the 17th, uh, 2018, or this coming year. Um, and as more information about that becomes available, that's where it will be posted. Um, and another resource is to sign up for the foundation's uh, weekly e-newsletter. Um, that'll you, by signing up for that, you're really on the front end of getting that information as soon as it becomes available. And then this is just a, a quick shot. This is if you open that first link that says Advocate Resources. Uh, this tells you about information uh, information about the how to join the the conferences, conference calls, the webinars, um, as well as how to access the ones that are recorded and see the ones that are coming up. Okay, so in conclusion, now it's time to put your story on paper. Develop several versions of your story for various audiences. Talk to people about scleroderma, and the more you engage with others and talk about scleroderma, the more comfortable you will become at, with the art of delivering an effective elevator speech. Take full advantage of the resources provided by the Scleroderma Foundation Action Center and participate in the upcoming webinars. We would like to thank you for joining us today on how to write your elevator speech. If you have any questions, please direct them to David Murad at D-M-U-R-A-D at scleroderma.org. We would love to hear from you. We would love to give you tips on anything that was on this presentation that you didn't quite understand, and we would love to see you in D.C. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.